Well, welcome everybody. Excited to uh, be back at it here again this week. Just finished up a really good practice this morning. We're in a good flow right now with our practices. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But uh, we'll give an update with our testing. That's been uh, once, since we've gone to the, the rapid testing, which is a daily test uh, that our school administers. We've had over 1,200 uh, of those tests, and we've only had one positive, and that's uh, uh, an individual that's not a football player and also not a full-time staff member. So that's been going um, in a good direction, about to get all of our guys back from uh, different levels of quarantines and different things of that nature. But uh, we're right now in the, in the process of um, <clears throat> still being in spider pads, so which means we have helmets only. At this point, we will be in those again tomorrow, and then we'll put on shoulder pads and be in shoulder pads um, and helmets only on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And then uh, – walk through day on Friday, and then we'll have uh, our preseason game number one on Saturday, be a modified uh, version of that scrimmage, uh, but we'll give some live reps and full pads on Saturday for the first time. So uh, excited about that. Um, do have uh, news to announce that uh, we have uh, had an injury, uh, Marcelino Ball uh, towards ACL last week in practice, and so he'll be out for the season. So really, uh, I hate that for him, and he's been such a great player for us, and really has matured so much as a young man. And, and so uh, he'll handle it the right way. And so, but he'll, he will not be uh, able to play this season. And so we'll wish him nothing but the very best. And as he uh, will have the surgery here in the near future and uh, begin the process of recovery for his future. And so, uh, <clears throat> but other than that, guys have worked extremely hard and guys have stayed healthy out on the practice field and, and uh, getting a lot of good work in each and every day and, and uh, just on a progression and, to be able to, to move this thing forward and get our team prepared to, to be able to play their very best football right out of the gate on the 24th. So let's take questions at this time. All right, Zach and John Blau. I guess, Tom, um, starting with Marcelino, I know you've got depth in that secondary. I think, the, correct me if I'm wrong, the plan had already been to move Bryant down to Husky, so you, you've got an experienced player to kind of step in there. But – does this cause you to reshuffle some things? Are there maybe some some freshmen or some guys we haven't seen that you would expect either because Marcelino's out or because you have to shift somebody over with Marcelino out that you're going to rely on a little bit more this year? Yeah, I think that uh, you've kind of you know summarized it pretty well. You know, Brian Fisher will be our, our young man that we're moving to that position. He'll be he'll be the starter there, and uh, DK Bottom's also a young man that. Uh, has been a stinger linebacker for us. And so he's going to be also getting lots of reps there right now. Uh, it's a very similar um, technical position in terms of how we, we play our defense. So he has been moved to that position. And then also we know we've got uh, uh, Jamar Johnson played there uh, last year as the backup to, uh, to Marcelino. So Jamar is an extremely talented football player. So he has the ability to play there as well. And then Noah Pierre also has the skill set to play there. And we got some other younger guys as well. So I feel like we got uh, – uh, the depth to be able to to rotate different guys but right now it's going to be Bryant Fitzgerald as as the number one guy there at that spot and, and then uh, training DK Bottom to be his backup. All right, John and Sammy. I guess one more question about um, depth in particular. I mean, are there any position groups that you feel better about um, coming into camp than you let's say? you know, beginning of camp into where you are now, or are there are certain position groups that you're looking at and saying we really have to identify some depth just because of what you'll be going through this season in particular? Yeah, I think that's a, you know, it's a legit concern that everybody I think is having right now in terms of, you know, how you handle um, the unknowns of the season, you know, both just the natural injuries that always occur throughout a year and then obviously COVID situation that we're all dealing with. So I, I think that, uh, you know, offensive line has always been an area that we've uh, you know mentioned as a concern. I do like the way that it was progressing. You know, we haven't had pads on uh, throughout this whole time, but uh, with the spiders, you're able to get a little more uh, use of your hands and drill work and things without worrying about your collarbone. So um, you're able to see a little bit more of their development. We'll know more after the end of this week, once we've had a couple uh, shell practices in. Which is, which is helmets and shoulder pads and then full pads on, on Saturday. So, uh, but I think that, uh, you know, really encouraged by the development of Luke Haggard as a young man we brought here. And uh, as, a, as a tackle, uh, Chris Badbury, same for him. Um, those two guys are new. And uh, I feel like that they've given us a lot more depth at that tackle position than we've had since I've been here. So encouraged by that. And as well as even on the interior, you know, I just feel like that, uh, 
by having Dylan Powell as an addition to our team coming to us as a grad transfer um, gives us some depth. We already got some guys that played there. Michael Kitty is another guy that's stepping up. But just uh, the whole offensive line is definitely an area um, that, that I would say is a, um, a concern. But I, I do I feel better than I did probably a month ago, you know, just because we've had so many reps now and, and that's been good. But like I said, I'll know more as this week plays itself out. I think defensive line continues to always be um, just the, the mass of our guys, the number of guys there, keeping those guys healthy and fresh uh, will be a priority. Um, and so those are two two positions. And I think we've seen growth there as well. I know we have a lot of young guys at that position. So those are probably the two that went into the fall camp situation most concerned about. Uh, probably feel a little bit better about both at this time. But uh, I just think that uh, you're, you're never going to be um, – I don't know if you ever feel great at this point just because there's so many things you just don't know right now. And, and just we want to keep everybody as healthy as we possibly can going into the season. All right, Sammy, then Tom Brew. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Coach. Um, Coach, there's been um, a, a month of football and people have gone out in front of you. Is there anything that you've learned from watching the games that have been played – to prepare yourselves to not fall into that trap that Navy fell into with not tackling and some of these special teams errors that have uh, c come in and bit teams in the behind? Well, yeah, there's no question. I think special teams probably is the one that I would point to the most. Uh, we have you know special teams meetings every morning uh, really to start our day, and we've made an emphasis of showing a lot of video clips. Did that again this morning of games from the weekend you know, the day before, or a few days before, and just to make a, you know, not obviously, you know, just saying it to our guys and talking about it, but giving them a visual example of, of how critical it is to, to be so locked in in all the things that we do uh, from an execution standpoint, you know, whether it's field and punts, um, you know, even just catching the, the, for the punter himself, catching the snap, you know, and the attention to detail on how we, you know, communicate in the back end with uh, our return guys and, you know, on the kickoff returns and fielding onside kicks and, and, and just the rules of all that and everything and how, you know, the ball going 10 yards and when you can touch it, when you can't touch it, you know, should you let a hot, hot one go free, you know, and, and let the back row guys take that, which you saw yesterday or excuse me on Saturday where it cost the team a chance to, to win the game. So, yeah, I just think special teams is probably the biggest one that we've capitalized on the different situations. And then also just clock management going through and studying as a staff games and, and, and being able to discuss as a staff you know, how we would handle that situation had it happened to us. And uh, uh, so, yeah, you're just trying to always learn it all the time, watching, watching football, encourage our guys to watch as much football as they can. Um, you know, once we get done with practice on Saturdays and get the film broke down, we all go do the same thing. So uh, I just think it's uh, you just got to capitalize and, and, and take advantage of watching watching the game be played because we're going to be in that situation here real soon and, and going to have to go full board playing against the top 10 team in the country and we're going to have to tackle extremely well, block extremely well, and execute extremely well. So um, the tackling part of it is just is what it is. You have to you know, right now, we've not allowed to, been allowed to be in pads. The whole conference is in the same rules. So we'll all start being in pads on Wednesday as a collective group. And so then we'll start doing the, you know, all that where we're going to try to really you know, get guys, you know, work on tackling as much as we possibly can without uh, getting too many guys dinged up. All right, Tom, then Kevin Brockway. Coach, you had mentioned you called Saturday sort of preseason game number one. But uh, can you talk a little bit about what you're – you know, try to get out of that first day in pads uh, sort of against each other. And if you could give us maybe a little bit of a big picture on week one, week two, week three, week four, leading into uh, the opener on the 24th as to, as to what each of those weekly plans might be like. Sure. So this weekend will be uh, – we always have the first scrimmage, as we call it, preseason game number one, and we'll have a whole, you know, leading up to it. We'll have meetings that, that will kind of mirror the game day feel and really try to get our guys in that mode and that mindset. And so uh, it will be, be a little bit different this year. We will have had more padded practices leading up to it in the past. So um, won't do as many reps. Usually we try to get about 50 snaps for the ones and twos individually and, and then threes as well. So we're going to take that number down, probably cut that in half uh, to be able to get our guys less reps live, but uh, emphasize situational football. Um, but we got to tackle and we got to block live. And so we'll have officials here for that. And uh, I don't think it's going to be in the stadium like it usually is to be a little bit modification on all those things just because of the numbers of individuals on the field that we're allowed to have at this time. So within the realm of, you know, 
it being a different situation. Uh, but I want to create as much live football as we can that we feel like our bodies are ready for and what we feel like our team is ready for. So I see it being a situation where we're going to go through and, you know, work on moving the football down the field, starting out. And then we'll create red zone situations, you know, coming out situations, you know, maybe even some third down specifically scripted, you know, situations where we get a chance to work on third and medium, third and long, you know, third and short, uh, things like that. And then have some special teams work where we try and get some live pressures on our punt team and some live pressures on our PAT field goal unit. So those would be the emphasis on week one. Then we'd go preseason game number two, uh, the following Saturday, which would be on the 10th. And that would be a pretty full scrimmage for us. Probably our really one big scrimmage we'll have for the whole um, time of doing a more like we have done in the past, try and get 40 to 50 snaps for each of the groups as much as we can. And then uh, be able to once again, work on areas that we feel like we need to get to two minute. We'll probably do that. Uh, not necessarily live, but, but with, with the official, here working through all those situations as well and and then we have we call uh preseason game number three which will be on the the, the 17th of the week before now we, we still don't know if we're playing on friday night or saturday yet so uh, based on what day we play that's what they will do that preseason game at three that's going to be our mock game uh that's usually done in spiders but it's uh a lot of situations that we script the whole it's just like we just basically try to simulate an entire game from start to finish warm-ups uh taking the field, going to the locker room, all those kind of things with our players and, and try to create that um, very similar feel with our guys and get them in the mode. And then you'll be, you know, a week out from your, your season opener. And so then we'll go through a normal week of preparation with a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, walkthrough day, and then Friday would be the, the day before the, the game. So that's kind of an overview of everything that I see playing out for the next three weeks. All right, Kevin Brockway, then Peaks. Coach, um, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but, you know, facing Penn State to start the season, uh, does that heighten the sense of urgency in camp? And uh, it, it, anything that you could take maybe from even a couple of years ago when you guys opened against Ohio State, similar caliber of opponent? It's sure better. I mean, they're, uh, they're a very good football team, you know, and there's no, uh, you know, there's no ramp it up, you know, on your schedule this year. It's uh, and like you said, we've done it in the past. My my first season as head coach, 2017, we opened uh, on Thursday night against Ohio State. So yeah, there's no doubt. I think that that creates a sense of urgency. Uh, I already sense it from our guys, uh, but uh, you still have to go through the whole process and get yourself prepared and get ready. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're everybody in the conference is dealing with the same situation. So uh, whether you play on Friday or Saturday, or whatever day they tell us we're going to start, you know, it's going to be a Big Ten game and, and uh, happens to be one of the top teams in the country coming to Bloomington. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, you, you just have to, you know, realize what you're, uh, what you're up against and, and how well you have to play to be able to defeat a team of that caliber. So, uh, but I do think that's a positive because that allows us, like you said, it creates that natural, um, you know, sense of urgency that, uh, you know, I don't have to, you know, work super hard to make them understand how, how good of a team we're about to play. They know, they know full well how good Penn State is. So uh, that's, uh, that's definitely positive for us. All right, Peaks and Jim Coyle. Hey, Coach. Uh, can you tell us exactly how uh, Marcelino uh, hurt his knee? And uh, related to that, what were you able to do the last week or so where receivers and, and, and defensive backs were able to work each, against each other with the quarterback throwing the ball? And, and did Marcelino hurt himself and something like that? Just can you expand on those two things? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, it was a non-contact injury, which kind of makes it even more frustrating. You know, you just plant and boom, it pops. And so that, that's where it's just it's hard to figure out how those things can happen. But we've all seen them, you know, in practices. It wasn't, you know, during a, a collision between two guys or even going against somebody. So, uh, but that's an unfortunate reality of what sometimes can occur. And But we, we have been able to go seven on seven. Um, and 11 on 11 with our guys, but it's not been, you know, there's no contact, no tackling, obviously. Um, and so you're just tagging off the whole time. So, which makes the injury more frustrating because it's like you feel like you're doing pretty much everything uh, you can possibly do. You really don't envision anybody getting hurt, you know, other than just, you know, rolling an ankle or, you know, some things of that nature, you know, just because you, you, know, you do have bodies around each other. But uh, um, unfortunately, it's just it's one of those things, you know. So, but, uh, um, but we have been able to do that. And, uh, but like I said, other than just live tackling and, and, and live goes against each other, we've been able to, you know, in the Bosch, have a really, you know, really 
heightened sense of emphasis on hand placement and and using your hands and keeping your head and your shoulders out of out of things is, is a big emphasis and during seven on seven you know you're really you know, everything's you know tagging off on guys in, in proper body position defensively and and doing everything you try and get guys to play the football you know we don't rake at the ball you know we, we punch at it do certain things you just try to find ways to keep people up and you know sometimes when you're raking at the ball you can twist guys around we, we don't do that when we're when we're in non-shoulder pad practices so you know folks we kind of got to the point where we feel really good about how we practice and and we're always finding ways to, to show guys, hey, this is exactly how it should look when you're a blitzing linebacker comes and, and a running back supposed to pick him up. You know, there's no collision involved there. How does how does the offensive guy get something out of it? Defensive guy also gets something out of it without the collision and also still, you know, getting better at what you do and, and keeping guys away from the quarterbacks, you know, which is a, a huge priority for every every team in America right now. So so uh, but it's uh yeah, I feel good about the way we've gone about it. It's just uh unfortunate, you know, part of the game. All right, Jim, and then we'll go back to Tom Brew. Hey, Coach, how are you today? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, the lack of tackling and inability to do that brings its own problems. But with that, has it given you guys the more ability to, to focus on sharpening the offense with Michael coming off of an injury and having a new offensive coordinator? Has that given you guys a little more time to focus on that at least? Yeah, it has. And, and I think just uh, – you know, because the, the lack of reps that you got over the summer, uh, we usually had uh, a lot of player-led practices over the summer. We weren't allowed to have any of those uh, due to the nature of the way that, uh, you know, our, our school really felt strongly about keeping our guys separate in those times. We were able to throw with the receivers and the quarterbacks by themselves, but not versus each other, even even with the players doing it, you know, on their own. So, um, and we, we don't do that with them as well in the summer. So this has given us time to make up for that, I believe. Uh, the timing of those those routes and those throws with our staff being able to be with them and 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 all those reps that you need to like you said to be able to you know break in a new officer coordinator and, and we've tried to by design all of our team periods we we don't script those so so Nick has a chance to call those you know um, like he would in a game just to get more reps of that and I think just the just the whole natural timing and chemistry that an offense goes through because every year it's a different group you know you got you know a new team even though we got a lot of guys back uh, it's still never going to be the exact same as it was the year before. So I think all those, you know, you were able to focus on those right now without tackling and, and going live and, and all the hitting up front, you know. So uh, definitely pros and cons to both situations. You know, you'd like to, you know, we all would like to be tackling more and hitting more. But but at the same time, it has given us more of a chance to, even on defense, work on the communication piece and just being in the right position and just adjusting the formations and motions and all the communication that takes place when those things occur and, and seeing different types of of uh, formations you're going to have to adjust to, you know, whether it's, you know, formation strength into the boundary, things like that, and motioning to and from that. So, so I think we try to really maximize the time we've been given and uh, it's been great to have it right now. Really looking forward to getting in pads this week, but uh, I feel like that, and I think we've been real creative with ways of working on tackling without, uh, you know, tackling bodies. It's been a lot of tackling equipment and, and bags and, you know, the, the, the donuts that they make now that are pretty, uh, you know, a good means to to work on the wrap and the leg drive and you know but it's never the same it's never the same as tackling a real person so we got to be able to maximize that once again without you know getting too many guys dinged up along the way but we've used crash pads quite a bit to work on different types of tackling technique that we use and and just trying to you know get a lot of reps in those in those creative ways and just even you know talk to other staffs watch the NFL teams because everybody's kind of been this even the, even the NFL during their preseason camp they weren't doing you know tackling against each other like everybody has in the past you're just trying to find creative ways to to still get that accomplished and, and not uh, you know both keep their guys healthy from a virus perspective and also healthy from a contact perspective all right Tom Andrew Tom then Andrew and we'll wrap up with John Blow. Coach uh, last week uh, there were a few teams like Virginia Tech that played without 20 players and a couple of others that played without 10 or more uh, and then even, of course, Florida State play without its head coach. Uh, how do you feel uh, from a comfort level standpoint that with the daily testing now, you guys are going to hopefully be able to avoid all of that? And and if uh, in worst case scenario, you still have a plan in place if you're uh, down a coach for whatever reason. And uh, if you could just chat a little bit about that. 
We do. We've had those discussions. You know, that's obviously something that you're, you're hoping that the, the rapid daily testing would eliminate that from happening as much, um, especially from the contact tracing perspective, which has been a, a big source of, of a challenge for everybody in this situation. So uh, I think that that will help. It doesn't eliminate the risk completely. So it is a possibility. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll find out once we start playing the season how the, what the numbers look like and, and, and how, you know, the things that have happened, like you just mentioned, those situations, you know, teams having 20, you know, I saw where one team had 23 guys out and it's been several that have had in the teens or more of players that haven't been able to play. And then obviously we all know about Florida State situation with their head coach. And I know even Virginia Tech had multiple coaches, defense coordinator, I believe, maybe even the guy that was supposed to be the backup defense coordinator. So they had to go to the third guy. So, you know, we, we basically, our staff have, you know, everybody has somebody that's taking their place at every position right now, already pre-designed, predetermined. And, uh, but, uh, um, you know, the third and the fourth guy, you know, <laughs> it gets a little bit more interesting, you know, but I, you know, even you think about, you know, it's happened twice where I've, I've seen where two teams have had their third and fourth string long snapper out there on in the field and it, it hasn't necessarily gone well, you know, in that situation. So, but I think that's just the reality of what we, it's made us talk about it quite a bit, you know, both as coaches and as players and making sure we have that depth addressed on our staff and, and feel good about those guys being in that position and, and being able to, uh, you know, step up and, you know, before it was always about the players on the field having to step up. Now we're talking about coaches having to, to rise up and maybe have to call a game that they weren't expecting to call when the season started. All right, Andrew, and then John Blau. Hey, Coach. Taiwan Mullen coming off a big freshman season. Now with the injury to Marcelino Ball on the defensive side, how much of it is going to be a key for Taiwan to step up and be a leader in his sophomore season for that defensive unit? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, he's, he's shown that leadership in, in practice um and and the way that he works and the way that he brings the young guys along with him and watching film and, and just being able to be a great example for that so yeah i think there's no question we got a lot of the guys you know i think uh Jayden williams is a guy who's really i believe stepped up his leadership um in, in this last several months when when we've needed it you know and, and and obviously when you lose a guy like marcelino that's it's not just production on the field it's it's the locker room, it's the weight room, it's the film study, it's practice, you know, and all the different things off the field. There were guys, you know, he was so locked in and so, you know, so excited for him to have, you know, a great season. So, uh, but other guys got to rise up, you know, and that's where, you know, that's reality. We've all seen it happen year after year and, and uh, this is no different, you know, and I think, uh, I think of the whole secondary, Jamar's a year older. He needs to be in a position of leadership and in the monster who's Devon Matthews and, and his ability and Ju and Juwan Burgess and those guys that have all been here for several years, they got to rise up and, and, and help us. And I think it's going to give an opportunity for a guy like Bryson Bonds to play some more snaps. And, and he's definitely a guy that we, We've been extremely impressed with so but uh, yeah those guys like that like you mentioned that the guy like Taiwan has to step up not just in his play but also in his leadership and and that's the beauty of, of what a team's all about and so I'm looking forward to seeing who those guys are going to be and and I know obviously who we expect them to be but sometimes there's always a guy or two that does you know more than you expect and that's what you want to see all right John Blau Obviously, with this kind of being a free year with the eligibility being extended, I mean, how much does that change your thought process in terms of freshmen? I know you obviously brought up Luke Haggard and Chris Bad Bradbury, those two guys. Um, obviously, they're not redshirting either. Nobody's really doing that to an extent. Uh, how much does that change your thought process in terms of freshmen and younger players playing um, as opposed to, I mean, do you think it could say constant just because of the amount of maturity and depth you already have on this team? Or does this, does this open things up a little bit more? younger players I think it opens things up a little more and uh in, in a good way you know I think we got like AJ Barner you know who I, I see making lots of progress and and uh the guy that I've mentioned before and, and uh that hasn't changed throughout these last couple of weeks and and uh you know in the past you say hey you don't want to you would probably play him four games and and didn't want to burn a whole year but uh now you're like it's just not you know, you don't, you're not worried about that, you know, and so he's going to have the extra year regardless, you know. So, yeah, I can see him now being a guy you say, okay, you take a person like that, now you put him on more special teams, 
you have, you know, a guy like that, you put him in situations where you say, okay, we're going to, we don't mind planning for, a, you know, whatever number of snaps per game, you know, um, in, in certain packages. So I just think, yes, I, just this whole, you know, mindset of the season has changed because of this new ruling. And we're not really thinking about the four games any, any longer. You know, we, and like I say, we had a list of guys that we put in the four game category and the, you know, different categories, you know, for that freshman class. And so now you're just able to say, okay, we got these whole group of guys and we, we see wherever we think they can help us win a game, whether it's one snap, 10 snaps, 15 snaps, whatever it is, whether it's on special teams only, you know, or just offense, defense. And I think you're, you're definitely going to be more aggressive with that.